Hi, everybody. Um, as introduced, I'm going to talk about the QGIS user interface. Uh, we called it a, a deep dive, basically, because we wanted to basically look behind the curtain, look how the interface is implemented, and see what we can do about it. But let's briefly start. Let's introduce ourselves. First, my co-author, Maria. She's over there. Maria is a, geo -ecolog a landscape ecologist by training. Um, we also have another friend of us around. Maybe you know him as Programmer Punk. Uh, we are kind of a small group uh, who has been using QGIS in, in many different ways and walks of life for different purposes, I guess. Maria is using it mainly for her thesis work right now. Uh, she's, she's more like an end user of this app. Uh, I myself, I'm a geophysicist by training, but also part-time aerospace engineer and for the most part actually a data scientist. So I deal with larger data sets and help people who do the same basically. So I'm more looking at this from a software side, but I'm also using as a geoscientist QGIS every now and then. So kind of my background is I fire up QGIS when I need it, maybe once a month, maybe once in a half year, but every now and then I need it and then I, can, I kind of need to adapt to it. So what's the problem? QGIS is interface, that's what I want to start with. Uh, we analyze it, I mean we analyze the code, we look at how it's basically implemented at a stage where the shortcomings are from our perspective in terms of if you want to improve it and uh, we want to suggest solutions. We have some ideas mainly as proof of concepts and uh, we would like, like to show them to you. We initially promised a live demo but in the interest I've seen live demos fail all over the place and I don't want to be one of those guys. So uh, if you're interested in a demo just hit me up after the presentation. I can show it on my laptop or on our laptops. We have it working there. We will also make the source code available. Actually it is on GitHub so I will give you links at the end of the presentation. So let's get right into it. The problem, the QGIS user interface. I don't want to call it problem in a bad way, so this is not essentially trashing the app or a, a rant. I mean a good rant can be entertaining, but this is not what this is about. It's more like constructive criticism. This is the QGIS app as you know it, with uh, some public public transportation of Bucharest in the background. I guess that's kind of what you see if you fire up QGIS for the first time. It's basically, it's kind of standard configuration. There's nothing special. You see some stuff on the left side, a layer overview and plenty of toolbars. I guess most of you are QGIS users, so you are used to it. But imagine just for a second that you do not use it frequently. You see this for the first time and you have to kind of figure out what this stuff is. So this is kind of the main window. And for like for the first seconds, okay, you get the idea. You have some something to open stuff, to close stuff, to kind of manipulate layers. But then you dive deeper, and then suddenly you discover, okay, there are more windows in here. Like every app, you have settings. Fair enough. The settings actually look quite nice, and you can easily get around and you figure out what this stuff is, and it's okay. And then it goes further, and then you get to the smaller dialogues for all kinds of different things. Some of those dialogues are fairly easy to understand. In this case, random points inside polygons. It's just, again, random. I randomly picked some stuff, so we have something to talk about here. But it gets, let's say, more complicated, and we have stuff like that, a query builder. This is a dialogue where you actually need some more practice, you need some understanding, you need to read documentation. It's a lot less intuitive than maybe the settings menu. You not only need to know about GIS, but you also need to know about how QGIS is basically doing things. So one thing that kind of... <laughs> I'm just going to the side for a second. That's something I did uh, with a little bit of Python. I just activated all the actions in the standard toolbars. So this is kind of a vanilla QGIS 3.8 on open source or Linux. Uh, it may look slightly different on your machine, maybe if you're running Windows. Uh, but this is kind of the point. And I heard you laugh laughing. So you, you kind of get the idea that if you're used to it, Fair enough, you, you learn all those icons, you get an idea what this is about, but is this intuitive to someone who has never seen it? Maybe you figure it out, sure, but this is lots and lots of stuff and, and, and it kind of lacks a system. That's kind of my observation and actually our observation. <coughs> so 
there are positive examples of how user interfaces in the real world, even in open source, can look like. And I would like to show you two examples in the open source world that I particularly like. And one is actually LibreCat. It's a very small CAT application. Uh, it started as an app called QCAT many, many years ago. I've used it, I guess, for the first time 15 years ago. Nowadays, it's, it was forked. It's called LibreCat. And one of the nice things, it, it, it's an extremely powerful 2D CAT app but uh, it has a very clean interface. And you c almost immediately, when you look at the color system, at the symbols, you, all, you almost immediately figure out how it works. And you only see the parts of the user interface that you actually need right now for a certain action. When I draw a line, for instance, the interface will change to buttons that tell me do I want to lock onto a different line, an intersection, maybe onto a raster. I will not be prompted with different actions like draw a polygon or something like that because I'm already within the process of drawing a line. So this is a very nice and clean example and I can only encourage you to look at this and, and try it out because it's absolutely intuitive and a very lovely app. One more example that I I guess we all like is uh, Blender. Now Blender is obviously for basically do, working with 3D objects and making videos and all this kind of stuff. But it's kind of one of those apps from the video editing world or let's say um, artist world where you see this very extremely clean interface. It's not only dark, it's one of the things, but it also has a, a system to it and the icons kind of make sense and you see workflows immediately. When you, when you look at this, you kind of have an idea where stuff is and where to look for stuff and this is kind of what I absolutely like about Blender and what I kind of don't see with Qgis. There's actually one more app that where we couldn't find good free screenshots, but I highly encourage you to look at the Autodesk commercial products, Maya in particular. Autodesk Maya is again it's not open source, but it's, it's a textbook example of how a very complex app can have a really, really lovely user interface. So this is kind of where we want to go. That's what we suggest. So let's go back to QGIS. So this is uh, a few of QGIS that I've seen many, many, many times because at some point I get a little annoyed and then I fire up the Python console. Now, Python and QGIS is just amazing. You can do everything with it. I mean, you get access to all the features, all the stuff that you do not find in the toolbars, all the stuff that you do not find in the menus, uh, stuff that is coming from maybe, um, let's say, plugins where the plugin doesn't provide a toolbar or doesn't provide buttons or anything like that. So this is kind of my most typical view of QGIS, actually. I just have the Python console open all the time. And it, yeah, it's showing Hello World and some interface stuff, so you get the idea. So what is the shortcoming here? We saw earlier in the session that you can do amazing things with QGIS if you know a little bit about Python. So you need programming skills. I do have programming skills, and I guess most of you have. But uh, let's say with Maria, for instance, she's a user. She does have some, but not sufficient to get around certain features to access them. And that's kind of the major showstopper. So I can tell from my personal experience, I'm sometimes training or teaching people on a professional basis that those programming skills, those initial skills, skills even if it is Python, can be extremely hard to obtain and they can, it can be extremely hard to teach people within a couple of days, within a reasonable time frame when you talking about, let's say, a commercial contract where people want to get started, let's say, within three to five days. Maybe you've done the same. It takes time to adapt. So QGIS, it's an amazing collection of features, but they are sort of hidden if you don't know and if you have not received this kind of training, and especially if you don't have programming skills. So how can we approach this? Let's analyze QGIS a little. So what is QGIS? I mean, the main map, the window. We kind of took it apart and made the simple sketch. QGIS is not this 1990s MDI app, which was like, if you remember Microsoft Office in the old days where you had this main window and then you had the child windows, the kind of stuff that you can still do with Qt nowadays. It's actually a single window app. It's just a Q main window from a Qt perspective, if you know the software. Uh, from a user perspective, it's a single window, meaning one project, one window. If you have different projects open at a time, you will probably have uh, multiple uh, QGIS windows open at the same time. And what you have in the window is basically just the menu on the top, some toolbars, 
and maybe a bunch of dock widgets. So that's kind of your interface. And of course, the main attraction, you have the map view. So the canvas, basically, where you show your maps, your layers, and all the stuff you work on. This is really the big, big, big part that QGIS actually provides for, for a user. The stuff around is just regular Qt, buttons, menus, and so on and so forth. So that's the kind of stuff which you can use to play. And let's, let's look into how we can play with this. When we started looking at the QGIS, I I'm kind of went into QGIS for the first time as a developer maybe half a year ago. Mm, I did plugins before, and we all did plugins before, but we really looked at the QGIS source code maybe half a year ago for the first time. And uh, just to explain this, uh, please understand it as a simple picture. What you have here is a kind of a file size distribution of the QGIS source code. So this is QGIS 3.8 if you download the source code for this single release. And if you dive into the source folder there, you see it's at this point it's like 30 megabytes or um, some 5,000 whatever files. So it's, it's a really large code base. It's not easy to get into if you're looking for something specific. And if you're looking for something specific, we tried just to get an idea for those who haven't seen it. We excluded blank lines and um, yeah, it's more like half a million lines of C++, of course. My apologies. Okay. And uh, it's more than 1,500 single files. We gained a lot of respect for QGIS developers. My, um, my absolute respect to you guys. And this is where I, as a developer, became frustrated because one of our first experiments was about icons, and I will show you in a minute. But anyway, QGIS at this point, if you just look at a source code, has almost 200 different dialogues, and that's just QGIS core. And it's not including generated interfaces. So this is just static Q dialogues in this app. Imagine how much training you would need if you would learn, have to learn all of them, especially for a non-technical user, like many, many people who use GIS on a daily basis. Actions, actions for those who write software, those are Q actions. Uh, so basically, this is all the stuff that you can click on it. Stuff in menus, stuff on toolbars, whatever. It's almost 800 actions. And again, the actions do not include stuff where somebody attached a click event. So those is not, this is not all the click events that are possible to trigger something. This is just actions where it's obvious that something happens when you click on it. So it's probably more than that. So it's 800 different things that you would have to memorize and kind of look for. And all the icons. When we looked at manipulating the, the toolbar icons, we found roughly 1,200 potential candidate icons, and that's already excluding a lot of the map icons that you would see. And I thought, like, okay, it's a big app, maybe it's organized. Uh, we found toolbar icons, or potential toolbar icons, in more than 400 locations within the source tree. And I would understand maybe two or three. This is 400 and change. It's kind of impressive. So, let's talk about solutions, actually. How can we approach this? We started with experiments. Now, with the source code in mind, what you have seen, we decided quickly, okay, there's no chance that we can just dive into the C++ and do stuff with it. It's kind of way, way, way too steep of a learning curve. So, we went back to Python. We, say, we analyzed the source code with Python. We can also write Python plugins. We can manipulate the entire app based on Python. It's just the way to go from our perspective, and it enables us to write nice experiments and to have a discussion with you guys. So let's look at what we did. We were talking about icons, and actually this was one of the very, very first uh, things that we kind of tried to mess around with, was an icon theme. So this is a draft, really. It was just a proof of concept, and it is. You will find it on GitHub. I will link it to you eventually that you can basically try to introduce cleaner icons with a cleaner color scheme where you know, uh, let's say, blue icons generally belong to a certain group of things, what, what you can do with it. Yellow icons, like in this case, the zoom in and zoom out and so on and so forth. You put it on a dark background and go forward. So this is still an early draft. You will find later drafts on, on GitHub. I unfortunately missed to make a good screenshot. Why did I not do a screenshot? The irony of it is, if you want to kind of build a theme in QGIS, and I'm not talking about the color theme in the background, but actually an icon theme, you have to recompile the entire app. We did not find a suitable way to kind of theme uh, 
QGISP with just CSS and stuff like that where you can switch stuff. It really boils down to working on a source code and recompiling the entire thing. So we publish basically the icons and a Python script which you can use to patch your source code and then just recompile it. I actually didn't recompile before this conference. So that's kind of the idea here. Uh, we're interested in ideas, concepts, of course, uh, improvements. This is a draft. It, may, it can be improved. Five minutes, okay. So let's go forward. So next thing actually is something we call workbenches. And the idea started with uh, FreeCAD, actually, another open source CAD system. And in FreeCAD, you can kind of, uh, for different workflows, you can kind of uh, define different um, kind of settings how the user interface looks like. Now, QGIS has something called profiles, and you can actually configure your, let's say, interface of QGIS in a certain way in a profile and then switch profiles, which is sort of interesting, but it does not, as far as we could figure it out, enable you to switch within a single project at a time without restarting QGIS. So a profile is something that is, to our understanding, loaded when QGIS is open for a new process. And what we did is we tried to figure out a way where we can basically just go to the top right bot, uh, corner of the window and switch between different workflows. So you have one workflow where you need certain toolbars and certain widgets, and they are all enabled in a certain place. You can define them, and then you can sw just switch back and forth between the different things. Imagine in one type you have to kind of digitize stuff, and in the other place, maybe you want to look at certain layers and do some analysis on them. So those could be different workflows. You can switch the interface back and forth as you go without restarting the app. Kind of an idea. The second thing, I guess, which is even more appealing to non-technical users is playing with toolbars. And again, proof of concept, it works. You can find it on GitHub, but it's just a sketch. Could look much nicer. Uh, the icons are really Im improvised at this point, but anyway. Let's say you need a toolbar for a certain workflow. And I do not mean the QGIS internal toolbars, but I actually mean new ones, where you just pick single actions from, let's say, uh, your kind of uh, QGIS app. So you can actually use this tool to create custom toolbars from all available actions in QGIS. You could even take this concept one step further and say you want to attach it to certain Python actions. And uh, this is kind of enabling you to kind of create toolbars even for stuff where you do not have an action predefined somewhere in QGIS. At the end of the day, your user could just have a toolbar for a single workflow you ship it to your user, and your user has maybe the 10 buttons that he needs all the time, and really nothing else. And you can just click through them from left to right, something like that, and get a certain job done. What it also enables you, and uh, we have kind of implemented the basics, you can share toolbars and those workspaces. You can sort of export them and import them as simple JSON, and you can kind of send it to people without uh, destroying their QGIS configuration. They just import your stuff. They, they maintain their old configuration, which is also a nice feature to have in a larger organization, I believe. Last but not least, uh, this is not a screenshot. We figured it out how to do it, but um, we ran into so many issues that this is more beautiful than the actual screenshot. <laughs> Ribbons. Ribbons and tabs. So, what if QGIS had tabs? That's something we wrote in the abstract. Now, okay, long story short, QT at this point doesn't properly support which uh, kind of... Um, uh, ribbons, like ribbons in Microsoft Office. You can make it work. It requires a lot of hacking and tweaking. It's not nice. The source code is ugly. The behavior has edges and, and so on and so forth. But you can basically build ribbons into QGIS. If one wants to see it, uh, we have a demo on our laptop. Remember, it looks ugly, but the point is we can do it. And we also want to suggest why not tap the interface and put dialogues into tabs. So again, this is possible on a plugin basis. You can just take the queue dialogues, put them into tabs, and for certain workflows, have them in tabs instead of different dialogues, which makes for a much, much cleaner workflow. Just an idea. We want to kind of float around here. And this kind of brings me to the end. And uh, I was told I have one minute left. Uh, what we want is we want to provoke a little, especially the QGIS developers, talk to us. And we want to talk to you guys 
And we also want to talk to users. What do you want? What do you expect from this interface if you actually wanted to rebuild it uh, or redesign it so it actually fits your needs much, much, much better? Last word about it from a technical perspective, we figured out that it's actually possible to rewrite the interface just in Python. The C++ core uh, map widget is fairly easy to adapt in, within Python code, so you can just reuse it. The performance critical stuff can remain in C++, but why not build the QGIS interface, rebuild it in Python, make it more flexible, more easy to maintain, and then implement new stuff as you go and make it more user-friendly. Thank you for your attention. All right, uh, thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, I know there are a few QGIS developers uh, nearby, and I, I'm pretty sure there are a few questions, or uh, maybe even answers. Um, can I see some hands uh, who, who would like, uh, so I can count a bit. Uh, it's just one, two, okay. Three, okay, I go to, uh, I go here. Start with the comment. Uh, thanks a lot for your presentation. This is one of my favorite topics. Uh, I'm a heavy QGIS user and I also uh, give trainings. I had a similar like uh, rant on Twitter not so long ago about, uh, especially from beginner's point of view, that it's really, really hard to get into the UI. And some comments I got there was that uh, it's not supposed to be easy because it's a professional tool. That was the weirdest comment, but I had also a lot of positive comments and people had the same idea. And I, I really like that you had um, already like suggestions on how to move forward and not like me, I was just ranting mainly. Uh, but really nice ideas. One comment I have to say is that I don't find, I find Blender user interface. Uh, <laughs> from a beginner's point of view, it's worse than QGIS. Uh, on the point of view, I would but it looks nicer. It looks nicer. It looks looks much nicer. But these were just general discussion opening question uh, comments. And thanks a lot for your presentation. One comment in your direction. Actually, I mean, plan I used it for the first time maybe five six years ago, and I kind of got one single job done without reading documentation. And this kind of impressed me. Maybe I was lucky. Uh, so I have a question. Are you aware about the locator toolbar? Excuse me. Locator toolbar in the bottom left. I, I'm personally not, but uh, are you? No, no, no. In the, in the bottom left is the locator toolbar, and actually, you could get rid of all of the interface and use QGIS from the lo locator toolbar because everything is accessible through search. Ah, no, I know what you mean. And, and uh, I think people do not know this feature very well, and it's very handy. So it's basically a f feature search where you just type in what you want and then it highlights. Okay. Yep. Well, the, the, the interesting comment here is actually when, when we try to build this toolbar builder, we recognize something interesting. When you list all the actions that QGIS has to offer, you, you find plenty of actions that have uh, maybe been translated, maybe not. Maybe they don't even have a title. And the most interesting part is that you have a lot of things that do not have a QT object name. In, within QGIS. So when you want to query something, maybe you have access to a different kind of table where you can find stuff. When you look from a Python angle into the C++ site, you, you see kind of an app where maybe 50% has a proper name, so it's properly searchable, and the other 50% is just, we actually do matching with a matching algorithm and a score to kind of figure out where a certain button is in the interface when we reload, we, because we have no way of knowing that this is the same feature that we saw the last time. So I would say uh, the feature is nice, but it needs improvement. What kind of ribbons do you propose? Because the Microsoft ribbons are terrible. I can't find I anything. I agree with that. So the, the, so, the, so the idea would be to have uh, ribbons basically for certain workflows where you, you kind of see a workflow diagram for maybe. You want to go from left to right in a certain uh, kind of a number of steps and uh, maybe like, like in a very simple graphical programming interface where you kind of cl um, 
like like the Lego programming, if you have seen it, where you put those, those Lego, Lego bricks which kind of represent if and else and, and for loops and this kind of stuff. And if you want to have so, something like this for simple workflows and just a single workflow, not the entire feature set of QGIS, then this is what I would suggest as a ribbon. And then you would have different ribbons maybe for different workflows. And again, like we are building toolbars right now, maybe you could build ribbons and just store them in JSON and ship them for a certain user for a certain workflow. So that's kind of the idea from our perspective at this point. Yes, it is. That's that's that we can show you. <laughs> okay. uh, last question, uh, I think. Yeah, uh, a comment from me. So, uh, I would say there were some very interesting suggestions. Um, I would definitely agree with uh, things like the um, uh, creation of your own toolbars for your uh, workflows and like being able to ship them to other people, as well as kind of having this support for profiles. Um, uh, then, as it was mentioned here already, like this ribbon interface, I think that's still a very controversial topic and it's maybe 50-50 of people loving them and people hating them, so uh, that's probably one of the more difficult topics to <laughs> kind of figure this, out. This is kind of the point where we would say, why not? I mean, if QGIS had a clean Python-based interface, you could have different modes in the interface and people could kind of easily implement what they need without playing too much with the C++ side of things. Because I do not like the Microsoft ribbons either, but sometimes they are useful. Why not enable it properly? Depending on what users' needs in this case. All right, that, that was the last question uh, within the time. Um, uh, but we do have the lunch break now. Yes. So maybe we can, without the video or with whatever, uh, we can stay a bit longer because I think there are quite some questions and maybe answers. And um, so um, let's just finish this officially and then stay if you have more questions, if you want to be here for some extra minutes. Yeah? Uh, one last comment, actually, project website and get a profile if you're looking for it and you don't want to copy the presentation, by the way. Just take a photo. Let's just move on, uh, I think. Um, Matthias, I, I see a lot of questions still, so... Um, you want to start? Oh, wait, wait, one minute before... Tomorrow morning early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, after Back at the, uh, the uh, you, will, you will have presentations. Yeah, yeah we have I cookies on the road. It's yeah, uh, 2 to 3.30. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so I, I guess everyone still in the room uh, wants to uh, go on with some uh, questions and, uh, and answers. Uh, if, if you're not, uh, please leave the room uh, so we'll be quiet for the, for the rest. This is not easy, is it? <laughs> Excuse me, should we go ahead with the official kind of uh, uh, questions answer thing? Or don't you? Because there are many people. Oh, I mean, you can. Yeah. Okay, okay then. Uh, let's just use the microphone and uh, and uh, be louder than the people uh, still talking, and uh, that will work, right? So, I think uh, you now you can start. Yeah, my question was: uh, this is exactly what I was looking for to contribute to think about the user user interface. So, where do I sign up? Thank you. Uh, where do you sign up? Uh, we, we kind of call it a QGIST project, like uh, bringing the gist of QGIST to people. 
was kind of the idea. Uh, it's also to provoke a little. Uh, just go to qgist.org or just check out our GitHub profile. It's, it's github.com slash qgist. And there you find all the kind of things and ideas and contact email addresses and so on and so forth. And we will keep uploading more experiments. At the moment, it's like three. We have about six or seven more in a pipeline that kind of needs to be polished so it's so your QGIS is not falling apart when you try them and then uh, we will keep publishing them. Well, in fact, I'm not talking about programming, hmm? just thinking about user interfaces. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I mean, you can also comment there if you want and and, and post anything you, you like, it maybe as an issue on GitHub, if you're familiar with that, then it's fine. Okay. Maybe any feature or comment that you yeah, would sure. Matthias, please use the microphone. I do. <laughs> very interesting talk. Thank you very much. There's a lot of uh, good uh, ideas there. So uh, one thing I wondered, uh, you, you always had like a quite high level of, uh, of um, where, where you're flying over all these things. So I wondered, did you, did you um, also look into uh, what kind of different workflows you could actually have in the end? So that you can kind of have like the, the typical user types and what actions they actually need to like get a bit of an order on on what the user interface must be able to do yep. in the end. So in this case, I guess I'm I'm more the regular QGIS user with maybe one or two workflows myself. So let's say I want to map something in uh, for OpenStreetMap or something like sim similar, and I have a, an aerial shot or maybe satellite pictures, and I want to digitize it properly and produce certain layers, have temporary layers where I store maybe notes and stuff that I do not go into the final map and stuff like that. So this is maybe one one of my workflows, my personal ones. And in this case, then I would need certain things where I can, I can add the polygons, switch between the different layers, maybe save a certain layer, like you have those no, new temporary layers in, in QGIS 3 that kind of, if you don't know what the temporary layer is, it kind of dumps its data and uh, when, when you reload it, uh, reload QGIS and, and if you're not familiar with this kind of stuff, you, you kind of run into issues. And that's, this is kind of my personal workflow. And uh, I can only talk between the three of us. We, we have different needs as users here. So one suggestion I already got was to actually survey uh, uh, QGIS users and see what they want to do in terms of different workflows and see what pops up. And I can only talk for the three of us who have been working on this for the most time. We have at least four different workflows within, within us, but it's just four. And I imagine, given the complexity of the app, there is much more. Thank you. I could add to it uh, in this way that I have my developer workflow. So all the tools which yeah. I need for QGIS or plugin development, I put them in one workbench or one workflow, and it's always activated. So if I'm testing something, I go to the testing workflow. But uh, if I am developing something, I stay in the developing. So it's quite easy for me. I don't have to bother about losing the data or resetting or crashing my QGIS or my configuration. The configurations are already saved in this JSON file. That's the main idea behind this. So it saves a lot of time uh, from development point of view. Yes. Any more questions or ideas? Yep. My only question would be, why does it have to be a separate product from QGIS? It, it doesn't need to. I actually didn't ever hear about it before now. We just kind of presented it here for the first time. And uh, I, I don't think it doesn't need to be separate. It can be part of QGIS, absolutely. But I mean, when, when you want to mess around with stuff, you don't want to mess around with the base source code, especially when, when you look at the C++ from, uh, from QGIS. Yeah, because so, you also did stuff that uh, could probably easily be done in QGIS. Certainly, yes. In a code, and, and we it's not to necessary to uh, invent stuff that no. we could do in QGIS. No, certainly not. That's kind of the idea. So that's why we implement it just as a proof of concept, basically as plugins at this point. And if it, you want to incorporate it into QGIS because your base functionality already enables you to do it in a clean way, then please do it uh, because it would make my life much easier. But um, <laughs> but so the, the, point, the point is, I wanted to see how people react to it and uh, what kind of feedback we see. So this so is so we important. are going to see a lot of pull requests from you with new object names for uh, all the QT objects that are missing names in the near future I and can, some cleanup in the icon 
uh, paths and all the things that uh, you said the, could the be improved? Probably th proper theming support like Qt is actually providing it. If you just look at the Qt libraries, they provide it and other Qt apps perfectly support it. So I don't know to which degree how, many, how much work it would be to actually clean up so you can have a proper theming support in QGIS. And I can imagine that it's a lot of work. I'm interested in doing it, no questions, but... but Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, should we just keep the microphone here? With the <laughs> <laughs> and so is this available as a QGIS plugin or...? At this point, it's actually just on GitHub. You would have to download it from GitHub, but uh, I can easily submit it to the official repository for QGIS plugins. If uh -huh. anybody here is in a room who can actually sign, uh, kind of approve them, we can just make it happen in the next 10 minutes. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would, I would suggest yeah, the like upload to the plugin repository. Yes, yes, that yes, would yes. be great uh, first step to kind of build the popularity also uh, outside of this uh, room. Yes, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I think like most of the things um, get implemented in QGIS in a way that people come and do it. That unfortunately we are not uh, yet there most of the time that um, someone would uh, just wish it and it would uh, land there. So, but we are generally very welcome to see some contributions um, for some of the let's say, more controversial uh, things. It's always good to create so-called uh, QGIS enhancement proposal. Yes. Where things can be discussed beforehand and you get the indication from the community whether this is something really wanted or uh, it's unclear whether people would want it. The question is, when, when you write such a proposal, you, you're mainly talking to developers because they are mentioned on GitHub. I am subscribed to this. I like like we all are at this point, and we are looking at the discussions, and it's really driven by people who know the C++ code base, main, well, for the most part. And it's not so much driven by people who actually use it. So what, what you need, and I guess we, we hit upon this multiple times now, is you need a channel where you can kind of really talk to many different users and uh, see what comes back there. Because the enhancement pr uh, process, I mean, I, I like the idea that there's a QGIS enhancement proposal. It's, it's similar to the Python enhancement proposal ecosystem. And again, it's, it's really dominated by developers. And there are also power users uh, within these QRPs. Excuse me? There are also power users within these QRPs. Yeah, the power users are, but, but let's say, I can talk about myself, I'm more the occasional user. Or let's say there are people, let's say maybe in, in companies who use it maybe 10, 20% of that time. It's still not a power user, but they are still, they're already looking at this and spending quite a lot of time. And then there's the community of people who have maybe, use, who are using, let's say ArcGIS and they want to switch and they look for certain things and they have kind of trouble adapting not only to the app, but also to the ecosystem. And when you look at how... Well, they, they, they give you a price tag and an email address and a phone number. It's kind of easy. If you pay the price, uh, you can call their support. And in, in the QKeys case, you, you find the mailing lists and the different discussion forums and the GitHub issue pages and the enhancement proposals, which is all nice, but you have to learn it. Well, ask your support on RJS if they can change the interface to a ribbon one. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth trying. <laughs> Okay, I, I think uh, it's, it's uh, slowly getting time uh, to 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 uh, head to the to the lunch. Uh, let let's give one more applause for the overtime, uh, Sebastian. Did thank you.